And unfortunately, it is uh, an issue that's going on right now, and we can't ignore it. There is an outside force that is trying to disrupt the future of our company. Now, as I said in the letter, it is an American right of workers to organize. I understand that completely. But it's also an American right of workers not to unionize and to embrace the values, the culture of his or her company. Unfortunately, over the past few months, there is a narrative that isn't true. The narrative is that hundreds of thousands of people are organizing against Starbucks. That's not true. When we look at the facts, less than 40% of people in stores that have voted for a union have actually voted. 40% of the population in that store. And so one of the things that we need as a company and one of the things I ask of all of you is to encourage every single person in every store that might be petitioning for a vote to vote. Because that person has a voice, has a responsibility, and no one should allow a vocal minority to control the destiny of a particular store or district or region or the entire company. And so everyone needs to vote. One of the responsibilities in this changing world that we have right now of a store manager, of a district manager, of an RDO, is to really understand who the people in our stores are, to talk to them specifically about the role and responsibility that we have as a company to them and their families, and to encourage them to really understand what it might mean to vote for a union. And so it's critically important that everyone chooses to vote. Now, there are stories, I, can't, I wasn't there, but there are stories that people potentially have been bullied not to vote. Think about that. That's not the Starbucks way. So it's critically important, the role and responsibility of our leaders in Starbucks is to ensure the fact that everyone has a voice in the future of the company. And that's what these co-creation sessions have been about. Me listening very carefully to the ideas, the creativity, the aspirations, the entrepreneurship of everyone I'm meeting. And we're coming up with fantastic ideas that will be executed against. And I said to everyone in these meetings is mark this date down because you're gonna be somewhere a few months down the road, you're gonna say to yourself, I was in that meeting when that idea was posed when that idea was created. That was my idea. Because we are going to co-create and together reimagine the future of the company. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that we have to reimagine the customer experience, the partner experience, the third place experience. We have to reimagine mobile order and pay, the drive-through. We have a lot of work to do. But the good news is, throughout the pandemic, and even as we sit today, the demand for Starbucks coffee by our customers has never been greater than it is today. Think about that. And why is that? Because people recognize the quality of the coffee. People recognize the relationship they have with you. The longing for human connection. The longing for a relationship with a company they trust. And we're going to build on that. So despite all the challenges that I've heard, in these sessions, which are real and I understand. We're gonna fix those things. But despite all that, the demand, the loyalty, the trust, and the equity of the brand, the relationship with all of you, the quality of our coffee has never been greater. So this is a fragile time for the world. It's a fragile time for the country. And it, in many ways, is a fragile time for Starbucks. But when I think back about the history of Starbucks, 51 years, don't you think we've had other challenges like we have right now? Challenges that took us from 11 stores in 1987 to where we are today? We have always been, we've always answered the call. We've always managed to overcome the obstacles, the challenges, the resiliency of the company is directly related to the leadership that you have provided. But the challenges right now are real and they're in front of us. And the challenges are multiple. 
the pandemic, a post-pandemic customer, the relationship we have with our customers, competitive threats, and now a new outside force that's trying desperately to disrupt our company. Well, I believe in Starbucks more than ever because I believe in all of you. My faith and confidence in the future of Starbucks is based on my faith and confidence in you, not some outside force that's going to dictate or disrupt what we are and who we, and who we are and what we do. And so the, the, the future of the company is in all our hands. The culture of Starbucks is in all our hands. Let's come together as we always have and recognize how precious a gift in so many ways the experience of Starbucks coffee is for our partners, for our customers, and all of us. Let's protect it, let's preserve it, let's enhance it. And you have my solemn promise that I will do everything I, human, everything I possibly can to make you proud of the company, to fix the inherent problems, and create a new vision as we reimagine the future of Starbucks together. Thank you very much. So, uh, Howard. Yeah. Thank you so oh, much. You're welcome. welcome. I, uh, I don't know if you're not sitting on the edge of whatever chair you're sitting on saying our best days are yet to come. I, I bet that's where we all are right now because I was sitting here watching Daisy's face. Daisy, your face, you're smiling. You're yeah, I mean, it, you were beaming with what Howard was sharing. You spoke to every single store manager deeply, personally, what their truths are, what your lives have been like, the incredible leaders that you've all been. I hope you heard how deep Howard's love for this company is, but most importantly, how deep his love is for all of you and the incredible leaders you are. So let's take it up. Let's start this movement with Howard. Let's all gather together. Let's focus on the good stuff that we do, the great impact we have in our communities and for our partners, for their families, for our responsibility. And as we've talked for three years now, your role as a store manager is key to making the most of this movement, the most of this moment where we all sat here together with Howard and committed to one another that the best days are yet to come because of each and every one of you. And if I can just build off one or two things that Howard said, if you are a store manager that is in a store that has petitioned, and we've talked about this a lot, please, your number one responsibility is to get every single partner to vote, every single partner. It's not okay that a small percentage of partners are voting and then everyone in that store has no choice, has no voice except through a union representative. That's not who we are. So please have every single partner vote because every single voice counts. Please, that is your responsibility. Please help us to make sure that every partner knows that their voice matters. And second, all of us are watching social media and all the stories that are coming out and the tweets that are coming out and the stories that I know personally, I have been in those stores with those partners. I have not seen some of the stories that people are saying are truths. Please do your role as a store manager. Make sure your partners get balanced information about what's going on especially in this role of us union busting all over the country. I was in Buffalo for four months with our proud partners in Buffalo. I saw day to day what those partners did to run the very best stores they could, all the culture and their love in the community and their coffee. Proud Starbucks partners. There was no union busting going on there. We're just trying to make sure that every single partner has a right to have their voice heard. So please partners, don't believe everything you see in social media. For those of you that have reached out, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for me to see and hear how some partners are talking about the company that I love. It's heartbreaking to hear those that don't know who we are say things that I know not to be true. So please do your part and help your partners get access to the balanced information they need so that we can build a company. Our voices can build a company that is the very best Starbucks we can be because of each and every one of you. So please help us. We, de we depend on you as leaders, and we depend on your courage like we have for the last three years during this pandemic. This is a new day, and the best is yet to come. So with that, I'm going to turn it over 
to whoever's asking the questions today. If you have a question, put it in chat. We've got all of us here today. We've got Debbie Stroud here. We've got Denise Nelson. We've got Shannon. We've got May. We have, of course, Becky. There's no introduction for Becky. And, of course, Howard. So please put your questions in chat, and let's go ahead and have some great dialogue. And I hope you guys are as excited and optimistic and inspired as I am because today is a new day. So let's go. Let's hear from you. Great. Thanks so much, Rasian. Daisy, thank you so much for kicking us off. What an amazing way to start. I can't wait to find out how many new neighborhood grants we have or uh, nominations we have after your call to action. So thanks so much for sharing your passion um, and all you're doing for your community and your team. May, is there a way to do an honest, unbiased break breakdown list between union benefits versus what Starbucks does for a clearer picture for partners or the breakdown of what those fees, et cetera, would be. I genuinely don't know what unions could make better for partners with the benefits Starbucks offers. Hi, everybody. I um, hope you're having a wonderful Monday so far, and thanks for the question. Um, so it's a great question and suggestion and something that we're actively working on because we want to be able to give all of you um, and all of the leaders information where you can have clear and honest conversations with your partners. The short answer is that everything gets negotiated at the bargaining table. So once a union is voted in and certified, the company and then the representation from the union will sit down at the table and they'll negotiate over everything. It could be wages, it could be benefits, it could be hours of work, et cetera. But nothing is guaranteed um, and nothing is, um, is, is uh, I guess, guaranteed is the best way to put it. So um, we are going to put together some information, though, again, to share with all of you. One thing that I can say confidently is that Starbucks benefits and pay are better than any contract that we've seen that has been signed by Workers United. So our benefits are better. Our pay is better. Our company is better. And obviously, we believe that we don't need third party representation. We want to talk directly with our partners and you to be able to talk directly with your partners. So more to come. Thank you for the suggestion. It says, it would be helpful for SMs to hear, maybe on a workplace live, examples of what type of change could occur in stores if they were to unionize. I don't believe we have great examples to provide to our partners once we have open dialogue around unionizing. Can we do this for a future event? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. As you guys know, what you ask for, we deliver. So any topics you want us to talk about, any further education, things that we've learned along the way, we're happy to share them. Um, what I would say, though, is that collective bargaining is, as May said, is a union representative sitting down with Starbucks talking about what they believe the partners that they represent want, and then there's an ongoing, there's a conversation and a negotiation of what you're going to give and take. The actual facilities work, the equipment work, the things that Howard talked about, the table stakes, that's not anything that I've ever seen in a union contract. Those are all things we do. We hire our own people. We train our own people. We invest in culture and coffee. Those are all things that we do. We take care of repairs and maintenance. We fix things when they're broken. Those are all things we do. I've never seen any of that in a contract that's been negotiated by a union, myself personally. So all the things that the union would bring are not necessarily what you guys have been asking us for. And I could say for the last three years that we've been together, everything you've shared that we talked about openly as leaders of this company are the things that we can control in our stores right now today. And I hope, as you heard, Howard's come back with a commitment, a commitment to every single one of you and your partners that he's going to do everything he can to make sure that you are proud of the company that you work for. And you are going to see the investments in the, in the most meaningful things for you, your families, your stores, and your communities. You're going to see and hear about those over the next couple of weeks because Howard has made his commitment. There's no one, there's no one that knows this company more deeply and more personally than Howard. So to have him back helping us make quick decisions, quick investments, and significantly improving the partner experience, the customer experience, and the store experience, you're gonna see evidence of that. So if you wanna just wait for a couple of weeks, we might wanna invite Howard back because there's gonna be lots of announcements that you guys are gonna want to ask more questions about, but they're all gonna be focused on you, the stores, in our community. So more to come on that and look forward to an upcoming workplace live chat about the question you gave. Thanks for the recommendation. May, our next question is for you. It says, once a store votes to unionize, can that be reversed if enough partners do not want that representation? 
Yeah, thanks for that question. And I saw some people going back and forth in chat. Um, it is a complicated legal process to decertify once a union contract is in place, but it is possible. Um, there are some nuances to when the timing of that decertification can take place and how many partners have to push forward that process. Um, so it depends on the amount of partners that are in your store and the time that the contract has been in place. But there is a process to decertify. Um, we've had some stores in Canada that have actually gone through decertification. So we actually had um, some stores, I believe they were in British Columbia a few years ago that all voted the union out. Um, but again, our, our best approach at this moment is to try to make sure our partners understand the benefits of having a direct relationship with us and to not vote with the union in to begin with. Thank you. I add something to that. Um, you know, we're sitting down as a team as we speak and we're talking specifically about new benefits for Starbucks partners. And you've been and, and you've asked many questions about that. So we're we are really focused on what are the relevant benefits for the future of our partners, as relevant as Beanstalk and healthcare was in the past. And to my surprise, because I'm not a lawyer, I didn't know anything about union stuff, um, it surprised me to hear the following. Uh, under the law, under the law, those stores that voted to be part of a union during this collective bargaining process, uh, which we are going to honor, by law, any new benefit that we create for the company, we are not permitted by law to offer that benefit to the stores that voted for a union while they are in collective bargaining. And this is told to me recently, and again, I'm not a lawyer. And that's so, so important to know that we, we're never going to discriminate against any partner. But by law, we will not be allowed to offer any new benefit to a store that has voted for a union that's in the collective bargaining process. That's not a Starbucks decision. That's the law of the land. And that was told to me last week, and I, I didn't know that. And so it's important. All these things are coming out that I think people... Uh, who might be voting for a union don't really understand, let alone the dues they're going to have to pay. Partners, we are just about at the end of your questions. I want to thank all of our partners who are supporting in the chat and community managing and pointing you to resources and answering your questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. We're not done, not done yet. Oh, yeah. No, we were going to ask you to close okay, us out I'm now. So floor is yours, Howard. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard for me to kind of sit here and not be very emotional about what's happening uh, inside Starbucks today. And uh, clearly there's been a sea change in the country with regard to worker rights, um, recognition that so-called workers need and, and require and should have, uh, but when I, when I think back of all the things we've tried to do as a company, not that we have not made mistakes and we're certainly not perfect, but I know in my heart that we have always put partners first. I know in my heart that the success of the company is directly linked to trying to create value for partners and their families. I was incredibly uplifted last week in the co-creation sessions when I heard partner after partner talk about how healthcare, how Beanstalk, how college achievement enhanced the lives of them and their families. I also heard the need for higher wage, for better benefits, and for better Starbucks experience. And as I said on Monday at the open forum, there's no excuse, and I'll never use the pandemic as an excuse for anything we didn't do well or things that we disappointed partners on. It, it just it was a very tough time, but there's no excuse. In the same context, I wasn't here the last four years, but I'm here now. 